So good afternoon uh, for all of you uh, based in Europe. Uh, good morning for all of you based in Chile. And for the rest of the participants, uh, if you are in another part of the world, uh, I really wish you are having a great day. My name is Paulo Miles Paez. I am a ESO fellow here in Garchi. And today I will be leading this tutorial session on how to create your uh, observing uh, material as part of La Silla Paranal User Workshop Part 3. Um, so for today, uh, the, the session that I prepared is based in Hokai. Hokai is a near infrared wide field imager uh, based on, on GT4. Uh, it operates uh, from 0.1 micron up to 2.5. And it uh, offers a wide field, well, a, a, a very decent uh, a field of view uh, as the schematic uh, figure that we have here in the in the bottom left of the of the screen. We we have uh, 7.5 micro uh, arc minutes uh, per site, and it also offers the possibility to operate using uh, adaptive optics. And uh, for today, um, I will show you how to uh, prepare uh, the observing material to collect uh, photometry of a brown dwarf or a stellar like object in different epochs and in different wavelengths uh, with the scientific goal of searching for photometric variability. In my particular case, I, I'm interested in, in determining the rotation period of this object uh, using uh, differential photometry. Uh, Something similar to what we can see here in the figure of the on the uh, top right side of the screen. Uh, here we can see the light curve of a uh, brown dwarf. Uh, this is the the relative brightness as a function of time, and this is real data taken with Hokai some years ago in the J band, and we can see this uh, modulation in the light curve, and it's a uh, is is attributed to the to the rotation of the brown door. In particular, this object is thought to be uh, rotating with a, a, a period of 1.6 hours. So today we, we are going to see how to, to create material to retrieve this kind of data. But before starting, uh, I would like to remind you some useful links that will help you to prepare your observing material. The first one is uh, obviously to read the, the guidelines, the main guidelines for the phase two uh, service mode. Uh, you can go to this uh, link here. Uh, in case that you are not using Hokai, in, in the link I, I indicate in red the, the name of the instrument. You can, you can change this name by your favorite instrument and you can uh, access directly to the, to the guidelines for that instrument in particular. Uh, also, uh, another useful link is the recent news uh, that you can consult uh, to learn if uh, there have been any recent modifications in the instrument that are not contained in the, in the manual or that you were not aware of. And uh, another uh, mandatory uh, link that you should check is the the scheduling and the feasibility notes uh, of your of the the program that was allocated time when you receive the the web letter from the observing program office. And uh, uh, another link is the the manual of the instrument that contains all the tips that will help you to optimize your your observing run. And then uh, we, we also have this link uh, to get used to P2, uh, which is basically what I'm going to show you today. Uh, this link contains here a lot of tutorials, more than what I'm going to show today, and also some useful videos that will help you to get used to, to this tool. And finally, if your program has suffered some modifications or you realize that you want to to observe a different target uh, or, or or use a different uh, instrumental configuration, you should submit a waiver or a a, a target change request uh, in order to be able to to do these changes in in P2 when you prepare your same material. And uh, in particular, the, the deadline for the next uh, period is uh, August 12th. And finally, if still 
you need some help, you can always send us a ticket using this link at the at the bottom, and somebody from ESO will get in contact with you to to help you with all the issues that you might have. So now uh, let's go to the tool that uh, we will be using today. Uh, we will use P2, but first of all, I wanted to show you P2 demo, which is uh, exactly the same as P2, but since this is a demo, it helps you to play around with the different configuration of your instrument and uh, to mess a little bit and, and, and see how uh, your observational strategy changes when you modify different parameters uh, of the instrument and uh, before preparing the, the real observing material. So in this, uh, in this page, um, on the on the left hand side, you can see all the the different folders for different instruments. Uh, those one with this uh, uh, suitcase uh, are uh, for runs that were allocated uh, visitor mode, while the ones that have this range are the the useful the useful ones for service mode. So in particular, you can click on Hokai, and here you will you will find the the folder with the tutorials uh, that are in the in the web page of the instrument and you can follow and have a look at how the OBS looks like. Also, you can create your own folder. And they start to to generate different OBS and, and see uh, how you can uh, prepare your observing uh, campaign. But now I I will use the real P2. So this is the web page. Uh, ISO.org slash P2 slash login. I already uh, introduced my, my username and my password, so let's log in. Uh, this is great. You can see that when you log in, there is a P2 error. Um, hopefully, it will not affect uh, to our session. Uh, so let's close it. And uh, yeah, here on the on the left hand side, you can see the different uh, runs that uh, have uh, been allocated time uh, in the different uh, observing periods. In particular, uh, I will work with this one uh, for P1A, P1A, sorry, that uses Hokai. So when I click here uh, to open it, it's empty. Uh, today we are going to populate this folder with uh, different observ observing OBs. Um, so when we click in the in the name of the folder, we get this uh, main screen with a lot of information. There is a lot of uh, uh, buttons to click and, and things to, to see at the very beginning can be a little bit overwhelming, but we will go over all of these in, in this session. Uh, so yeah, the, the, the first part is the information of the run uh, with the the principal investigator name, the observing mode, the instrument, blah, blah, blah. Then there are two sections for readme and checklist. We will go there at the very end when we have all the observing material ready. And the third one, uh, the fourth one, sorry, uh, it's uh, meant when you have to generate large amount of hobbies and instead of doing it manually, as we are going to do it today, you can use a Python uh, tool and then upload everything here. And I think this part was already covered in previous session of the, of the workshop. So in the top panel of this uh, main screen, uh, we also see uh, different sections, the details, uh, in which we will introduce most of the, of the information needed to prepare the observing run. Uh, then uh, an overview section that gives you a as the name says, uh, a general view of the different program that you have, uh, uh, in which you have time at, at ISO, and uh, the different uh, OBs, for example, uh, this is a past program, and we can see here the different uh, OBs that I created, the targets, uh, the constraints, blah, blah, blah. And then the next section is the schedule. That also is, is very useful to, to indicate the, the order in which you want to, to serve your observing material. We will also work on this uh, later. But let's go to the, to the very beginning. So we go to the details section. And 
in particular here, value the name of your folder, you see different buttons. The first one is the OV, that it's, uh, it's the one that we need to create a, an observing block. It's the basic one that we will, we will be using today. Then we also have something meant to obtain calibration. It's called the calibration blocks. Uh, if we have a lot of OBs and we want to sort them in, in some fashion, we can create a folder. If we click, we, we get a new folder, and here we can populate it with new OBs, but today uh, we're going to delete it. We don't want it. And then the, the last three uh, buttons are uh, the, the group, the time link, and the container, and it will help us to, to relate the different OBs that we want and to indicate uh, in which order we want them to to have uh, observed. So, as I said before, today we want to monitor a brown uh, We want to collect a time series. We want to collect images uh, over, let's say, one hour in different filters. So we start by clicking here in the OV, uh, and we we have uh, the, the OV with this ID and currently has no name. So the first thing what we do is to change the name of the V. Uh, depending on the nature of the observing material, uh, of what you want to do, there are some naming conventions. For example, if you want uh, to execute a target of opportunity, uh, you should name this OV in a certain way. Or if you want to observe an asteroid, a moving object, you should also start the name of the OV with a certain a combination of letters. But in this, in this case, uh, we are not uh, doing any of those. So we are going to call this OV something like uh, uh, J long, because we are going to observe uh, in this OV for one hour. We're going to collect images over one hour. So we choose the name. OK, you can see here that the, the name has changed. Uh, if we go to the overview, we can see now that uh, we have when this folder was empty, now we have our, our OV defined. So we go back to details. And uh, there are different boxes that we have to fill in. The first one that I like to fill is the target. So uh, there are different ways to, to introduce your target. One that you can try is uh, by searching by the name. For example, you can type the name of your, one of your favorite targets. For example, TPLM513-46. It's a late term door that I, I really like, um, and I've been studying a lot uh, over the past years. You click on Resolve, uh, P2 Connect to some online database, uh, mostly uh, Simbad, and retrieve all the information. So here we have the, the, the coordinate, right? Ascension and declination, Equinox, the epoch, and also if there is some information available on the proper motions, uh, it also populates the, the corresponding uh, boxes. Um, there are also another ways, uh, since this run was allocated some time uh, for certain targets, we can select from our list of approved targets. And uh, automatically, you can see that uh, P, uh, P2 uh, retrieves the new uh, coordinate for our target. And, uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah, you can you can choose any any target on the on the list. So, okay, let's let's work with this target J0415 minus 09. It uh, sounds like a good name. So, uh, the next step, obviously, when we know which target we want to observe, we have to tell the telescope where to point. So we are we're going to acquire the the target. So this is done by using an acquisition template here in the bottom. You can choose between acquisition, science, or calibration. The first template that you have to use is the acquisition. And if you check the manual of uh, Hawkeye, there are different ways to, to acquire your target, depending on what you're doing. If you're doing fast photometry, fast photometry with a uh, rapid response mode, or if you are using the optic optics, or if you want to collect your target in a certain position of the detector. But today we're going to use uh, the most basic way. It's just uh, pointing to the, to the target. Uh, this is useful if 
the the pointing you, you don't need a, a very accurate uh, pointing like um, uh, within two or three yard seconds so let's add this template okay and here uh, we can see the different uh, fields that we have to fill in most of them are are, are already populated but since we are observing, we want to serve in the JDA, so we, we indicate a filter here, filter name. Uh, since we want to, to resolve the field, uh, with 10 uh, seconds, it should be enough to, to see the brightest star in the field of view. Uh, for the number of uh, detector integration time, we just say one. We don't want to accumulate a lot of these images. We only want uh, we only want to resolve the field. And then there are three very important um, parameters that we are going to cover now. Uh, and in particular, they are important for, for Hokai. But before talking about them, we are going to uh, 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 decide if we want to, to use a, a guidance star. Uh, yes, we want. And we have several options. We can choose our favorite. Uh, Guiding star. In this case, we should select this setup file and indicate the coordinates. But in this case, uh, we, we can also not guide in and, 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 and choose none, or we can just let the telescope operator to, to choose the most appropriate one. So we choose catalog. Okay, so uh, we acquire our image. And in the different uh, section that you see here, the last one, it's called Ops Prep, and it's very powerful. It's very visual, and we're going to click there, so we can now see the field of view of our of our target. Uh, you can see here a uh, two mass image. You can play a little bit uh, with the with the combination if you want to to modify the the aspect of the image. We're going to leave now the default one. I know the field of view. And I know that my target is this one, the one that falls just in the center of the of the field. But now there is uh, something that we have to take into account. Uh, Hawkeye has uh, four uh, four detectors, and they are separated by uh, about 15 a second. So if we take data in this configuration, we are going to miss our target. So we need to move. The center of the, 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 the field where the center of the telescope the point where our target is to some of the region contained in the in the detectors. So there are several ways to do this. Uh, the first one is by using this uh, alpha and delta offset that I mentioned before that were important. So we are gonna by by introducing the offset in these two boxes, we are gonna be able to move the target from this uh, gap region to another one. For example, let's move it to the center of the Q3 uh, detector. So since we know that this is approximately 7.5 a second, this is the half, if you do the numbers, uh, I'm going to move 110 a seconds in this direction, and then 110 a seconds in this direction, the pointing. So the target will move in this direction and then upward, and we will have it close to the center of the detector. So let's do it. We type here uh, on hand trend, and nope, I don't want that. And here minus, uh, uh, so sorry about that. Let's move it in one in one direction in the in the right ascension only. And we see that our image, our target that was initially here now moved to the set to more or less the, the center of this side. So now we want to put the, the target here. We have to move it outward. So this means that we have to move the telescope pointing uh, to the bottom. That's why I type here minus 110. And now, ops prep, yeah, there we go. So we have our target located in the central part of the of the detector three. Let's say that since I want to do differential photometry, I want to keep most of the brightest. Paolo. Stars. Yeah, sorry. Uh, you, Mario, has a hand up. Has a oh, question. Sorry. Oh, thank you. I I cannot see 
uh, people uh, uh, when I, I share the screen. Uh, yeah, yeah, Mario. Okay. Uh, hi, Paolo. Uh, just a question. Are the four chips equivalent? You move in the uh, quadrant three. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, which one is the most sensitive of the four? Uh, I don't have that information right now, but uh, um, I think Lowell is online. Uh, maybe he can, he can answer that. I confess I'd have to look it up, but it's in the manual. It's, it's easy to find in the manual. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Yeah, for this example, I, I decided to put the target in, in the detector three, but um, right now I don't know which one is the most sensitive. Uh, from the quality of the image that I have seen, all of them look decent. I, 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 I don't recall to have seen one super bad, but I, I cannot say which one is the most sensitive. They're all good, and I'll get back to you on that. It's a global. Um, okay, so as I was saying, uh, let's say that uh, I want to use this star for the differential photometry of my target, but it falls too close to the board and I don't like it. I would like to put it slightly more in the more inside the detector. I can play a little bit with the offset in the right ascension and move it, or more easy. We can use soft preps. We can click here on the move telescope center and just uh, move the, the, the orientation of the detector in the direction most convenient for me. So let's say like over there. And so this is another way just to put your your target of interest in the in the uh, area that you, you want the most. So since we have been uh, moving manually the field, you will see that the, the offset automatically get to zero. And the coordinates of the target has also uh, been modified, since we, we have been modifying the, the point of the telescope. But we are happy with the configuration. So, okay, we already have the, the, the target in the, in the field. Now let's define the, the science. And again, uh, if you check the manual, there are different ways uh, to collect uh, science data. Um, uh, I will use this one, the generic offset. I, I want to do differential photometry, so I don't want my target to, to jump uh, in random positions in the near infrared to generate the, the sky image. I want to move the target to certain position because, um, well, this is more technical, but uh, when you have your target here and you move it randomly, then the differential photometry can contain some random errors that are difficult to relate to real variability or to instrumental variability depending on the position. But if you move your target, let's say in a linear way uh, to create a, a sky image, then in a linear way, it will imprint a linear print in your, in your light curve. So it's easier to, to correct. So, my, my decision here is just to create some generic offset. It's a, this is just particular for my science. In your science, it can be different. So for the uh, integration time, uh, if you check the, the ETC of the instrument uh, for the, the typical brightness of my target, which is like uh, 17 magnitude in the J-band, 20 seconds is okay. Uh, the target will get some decent amount of signal and nothing will saturate. So I will collect images with a cadence of 20 seconds. Uh, for the number of exposure per offset, per, 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 per position uh, of, on, the, on the detector, uh, there is a rule that says that we have to spend about one minute in each offset position. So I'm going to say that I will stay here. I will take six images, so I will stay two minutes in each uh, offset position. And then here I... I define how I want to do my my offset, uh, my detailing pattern. So <clears throat> something that I like to do is to start with an offset. I will say minus 20 arc seconds. And then uh, I will move 10 and 10. The offset are uh, are respect to the previous one. So if I am in this position and then I move minus 20 and one, if then I add 10, I will, get closer to my initial position. And if then I, I add other tens, 
I will arrive to my to my initial position. So this configuration, the configuration is very useful for that, and it allows me to to move only in one in one direction. So for the inclination, I I don't want to move. I will indicate zero here, and uh, this option called return to origin means that when this uh, template finishes, it will the telescope will go back to the original position. Uh, I don't care too much about that because I will be moving my my, my target over a, a few positions in the telescope, so this is not crucial for my data. I'm going to disable it. And and then there is this option in which you can you can uh, indicate the category of the data. Everything will be signed for me. Uh, the number of uh, detection integration uh, that I want to accumulate in this uh, image that I will retrieve, I won't want. So every time that I integrate, I get one image. And uh, for the number of offset, uh, I want to be collecting data for about one hour. So here I, I need to play with a number. Uh, let's say something like 20. And now we will see the, the execution time here. If you click here at the top, you can see the total duration of the V. Uh, right now we have a uh, 53 minutes, which is uh, close to one hour. And then uh, also you can indicate if the 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 sequence of uh, your observation the if they are uh, target or, or sky. Uh, in this case, everything will be object. Everything will be a, a target for me. I I will not be uh, using uh, classifying my data as sky. <coughs> And then you can also indicate if these offset positions are are in the detector coordinates or in the sky coordinate. I I want to to keep the detector coordinate, which uh it, it will be uh, in the current uh, configuration we have the the north on the north up and east on the left, so it's uh, basically equivalent. We don't have any rotation in the field. And uh, most important, we have to define which filter we want to use. OK, so uh, we have already defined the, the, the observing block. Uh, we will be collecting data for one hour. There are other uh, sections that we have to fill in. Uh, for example, the constraint set. Uh, this run got time in band C, so it's a, it's a filler program. Uh, we are going to name this uh, constraint set as band C. And here we can indicate uh, the the condition that we we want uh, uh, our data to be taken. So uh, I'm gonna say an error of two. I don't want to to get it so so low. Since it's band C, I don't think I will get a, a observation in clear condition. So and and also for difference of photometric variable, I think zero is okay. And the rest of the parameter, I will them, I, I will let them by default. Um, something very interesting in P2 is that every time that you make a change, if you want to make sure that uh, everything works, you can click here on check, and P2 will tell you if there is uh, any mistake. Uh, in this case, uh, this error is uh, okay. Uh, I need to provide some instrument comments. Okay. But uh, yeah, we are done with the constraint set. Let's correct the, the mistake. It's here. Um, user comments. For user comments, uh, something interesting uh, is that we can say that the target is close to the center of Q3. Q3. So the, the observer can, can see this, and, and, and it will be easier for him to or her to, to recognize the field. An instrument comment, uh, we have to indicate the, the magnitude of the brightest star. I did my, my homework before. I know that the, the brightest star is uh, J, J10. Uh, you can check it in, 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 in Tumas or in Simbad. Uh, just go there and, and, and check your field. And uh, yeah, so uh, we don't want to indicate a time interval here. The, the OB can be observed at any time. We want to uh, generate a find the shard definitely. Uh, so we click here, and uh, P2 is going to generate them automatically. 
Uh, it also uh, sometimes it takes a bit, so we we need to be patient. Um, it also gives uh, uh, the opportunity to upload your own image and and, and create a final chart. For that, there there are some guidelines that you have to to follow if you want to create your your own final chart. So yeah, uh, for the moment, uh, just wait until uh, you generate the the chart. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's done. Good. So here we can see two two charts. Uh, the one on the right uh, is showing you the the field of view of uh, Hokkaido, and then some additional um, uh, stars. Uh, that uh, I I believe these are the the ones that can be used for for guiding uh, in most cases. <coughs> and then there is a zoom showing you here the the feel of, of your target and these uh, uh, red border sections. If you if you can see there are three. Uh, these correspond to the different these different patterns that we define. We can go to observes again, and here in the pointing next to the pointing we have observing offsets, and we can see here all the the offsets that we uh, define here in our science template. We can send the, see them more visually in in, in offset, and we can see our first the first image. If we put the the, the mouse on on it, we see that the the image uh, uh, shows in red uh, the section corresponding that. To that exposure, to the second one, you see that the the border, uh, the, the red uh, squares moves, and the third image. So this is uh, very visually uh, we can we can see that in all the different pattern, all the the stars of interest, our science target and the comparison stars are in the field, so we are not losing them, uh, which is uh, which is uh, great. Okay, so. Um, we also have an option to see the target visibility uh, is the moon. This is uh, the target. We can change the the date and see how the the visibility of our target uh, changes as a function of the of the date. So which is a uh, very very handy to see the the typical elevation that it achieves or when it is uh, uh, visible. Obviously, okay. So uh, I think we have done everything for this OB. We're going to check it and see if everything is correct. There are some warnings, but uh, we can ignore them. Uh, the first one is uh, the alpha or delta offset are left unchanged. Uh, mind the gap. OK, uh, yeah, uh, it's fine. We, we, we make sure that our target is not in the gap. And then the sky of price constraint for this OB has been relaxed. OK, yeah, this can be an error or this can be a personal choice if you want to slightly uh, relax the, the observing condition for your run. Good. So um, now uh, I would also like to observe this target uh, in the Y band. So and, and also for one hour approximately. So we can do this again all the step by creating a new OB or more easily we can go here to we can select our OB the one that we created now we go to edit and we click on duplicate OB so now we will have the same OB with a, a name uh, with a, a two appended at the end we're going to remove it and we are going to say uh, white long um, okay Two, two, two. So since we are observing in the in the Y band, we are going to change the the filter of uh, observe, observation in the acquisition template and in the science uh, template as well. The Y band, since it's a different filter, we are also going to modify slightly the the integration time. Uh, in the Y band, our target is a bit fainter, so we are going to integrate for 50 seconds instead of 20. And since we want to to observe for about one hour now, uh, the the execution time is too long. We're going to reduce the the number of uh, exposure for per offset. Let's say three. 
and um, and the number of offsets, obviously the number of images that we will get. And we are gonna say something like, um, oh, let's see how we change now. One hour, okay, we are almost close to one hour. Uh, let's say 19 and it should be fine. Good, so now we are under the one hour limit for allow for, for this of it. If you would generate a OV longer than one hour, you would need to, to submit a, a waiver uh, request. Okay, so uh, that's it. We have, uh, and, and let, let, let's see if everything is fine. Yeah, everything is fine. We have two of these that allow us to observe for one hour in J band and Y band. But now let's say that I also want to observe for only 10 minutes this target. So again, we duplicate the, the OV in the, in the J band. And the only thing that we are going to do is change the name. We're going to call it short. And we reduce the, the number of uh, offsets, uh, the number of, yeah, number of offset. The say now five. And yeah, we're sort of for 10 minutes. Uh, in total, the, the OV takes 20 minutes. And we are going to do something similar for the Y band. All this will make sense now. Uh, since we have to prepare the, the observing strategy for our targets. So uh, we do here four offsets and this OV in Y band uh, observe our target for 10 minutes and it has a total duration of almost 18 minutes. Okay. So now uh, we have four of these, one that observed the target in J-band for one hour, another one in Y-band for one hour, and then two short ones that observed the target for about uh, 20 minutes in total in, in J and Y-band. If we submit these OBs, uh, they, they can be observed at any time, but uh, we want, according to our sign, interesting, we, we might want to observe uh, the two long OBs uh, in well in, in, in different epochs, but we want to give priority to them uh, compared to the other to the other two. We want if if they observe the long in J, we want that the next OB that is observed is the one in Y band, but long, not the short one. So this uh, can be done by creating a, a group container. Uh, we click here in the G, and instead of creating the new OVs, we are simply going to copy the OV, and we will paste. We, we select again the the group, and we paste the OV. And again for the Y, we copy, and we paste, and we can assign a, a name to the to the group. We, we can say uh, um, yj long. So in in this case, we're gonna update the, the total time of this uh, group. So in this case, um, if the j if, if this OB in j is observed, then this one in in y will get priority over this this other OBs that we have created in our run, and. Uh, or even if you have defined OBs for other targets, uh, the, the these OBs will be we will have preference if one of them is observed. Another science case, for example, uh, let's say that we believe that our target is is a long period variable and we want to serve it over one month with a cadence of one week. So at each epoch, we, we don't want to be observing for one hour because the, the changes in brightness are going to be tiny. So we, we only want to observe like 10 minutes and then one week later, other 10 minutes and then one week later, other 10 minutes. So we will be able to, to track the, the changes. So now we can use the, the short, the, the OBs that we created in, with short uh, cadence and we will put them in a time link container. So again, we click on the time link. We select our OV in J band with a, a short uh, um, monitoring. So we copy and we paste it uh, in the time link. 
container. Okay, so we have it here. And now we are going to duplicate this. This will be, uh, let's say, three times. We want to save it three times uh, with a cadence of um, uh, one week. So we select the, the OB, we go to edit and duplicate the OB. So we see now the, the new OB, uh, which is identical to, to this one, but the name is has now a, a, a two appended. And uh, and again, we we duplicate the view for a third epoch. So now we have our initial OB and then other two to follow up in, in different weeks. So um, we're going to change the name here. Okay, let's call it long term monitoring. Good. And in here. OK, this is the total duration of the three of these. Each of them has a duration of 20 minutes, more or less. So in this situation, we have to indicate that uh, we want uh, a certain uh, separation of time between the different OBs. So what I'm going to do is to um, specify a, a time interval in which the first OB should be observed. So we select the first OB in the, in the timing container. We click on time intervals and uh, we are going to define a, a period of time in which uh, the object can be observed. So um, from the target visibility, uh, well, the, the period starts in in October and uh, yeah, the target will be completely visible in October. So in the time interval, let's say that we want the first OV to be executed any time between October 1st and uh, yeah, January 1st. OK. And then we are going to specify that once this OB is observed, a few days later, this one should be observed. And then when, the, when this is observed, uh, a few days later, the third one will be done. So we do this by going to the schedule uh, section here on the top. We click in here. We can see um, our uh, long-term uh, time container here uh, and the three of these design, defined inside. So the first one has a absolute, absolute time defined. And for the next one, we, we say that we want to get uh, a kind of one week. So let's say that five days after the first uh, OV is finished and no later than nine days, we the second, the second, the second OB should be observed. So this will give us more or less one week of difference between the two OBs. And in the same way, for the third one, uh, when the second OB finish, uh, at least five days later, and um, no later than nine days, we will get the third measurement. So in this way, we make sure that uh, our uh, the, the the data is is collected in with more or less one week of difference. Okay. And uh, it can also be that we want to get a uh, coeval uh, data in different filters. And we really need to observe J and Y band in the same, in the same night and almost in the same, uh, at the same moment. So in this case, we use a, uh, a concatenation container. And this is useful because if one OV uh, inside the concatenation is observed, all the other ones must be observed uh, uh, after, after the first one finishes. So we click here in the concatenation, we change the name. Uh, let's call it uh, YJ Coeval. No. YJ Coeval. And, and again, it's uh, very simple. We just uh, click on the short OV, we copy, we select the, the concatenation uh, container, and we paste uh, the, the OV in J-band. And for the Y-band, the same, we 
copy and paste. Okay. And if we click here, we update the, the execution time. We see that the this container has a total execution time of 31 minutes. So if um if the if this OB is observed, the other one will be observed exactly after uh, the end of the first one. Uh, so it's uh this is one one of the cases in which you can use the the concatenation uh, container. So yeah, we have already defined our three uh, cases in which we want to to get uh, photometric data for our target, and now we are ready to to certify the the different OBs. Um, so we click here on the on each of the container. We check that everything is fine. Okay, everything is observable. And we click on certify. Okay, so now it's defined. Now the the container and the the OBs inside inside it are all in in red uh, red mode only. Uh, we cannot edit them anymore. We do the same for the uh, time link container. Uh, it's fine. We certify. Good. And with the last one. Check everything is okay. Certify. Okay, and finally, these uh, four OVs, uh, we don't want them to be observed because they are already inside the, the container. So we we're gonna delete them. Uh, so they they don't use uh, time in our in our serving run. Mm, we remove it. Yes, and the last one. So we already have our uh, observation ready. So the next step uh, is uh, going to the main page of the program. We can update here the total uh, execution time of the observation that we have prepared. In total, is three hours, uh, almost 20 minutes. And there are a few sections that we still need to, to fill in. Uh, the first one is the readme. Uh, there are different sections that you, you have to be uh, Completing up here, uh, we give an estimate of the door execution. So if three hours and point three, okay. And the general description. This is uh, an important part. Uh, the general description uh, is the place where you have to give the main ideas of your program and and indicate the uh, the main preference for 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 the execution of the of the observations. Uh, the general description is not a place to paste the abstract of your program. Uh, imagine that the person that is going to read this is going to be tired in the night, so we should be we should be sending very brief and, and concise uh, information. So, for example, uh, for this run, we we can say that the program is um, photometric monitoring, photometric monitoring uh, in different cadences and bands of uh, round doors. Uh, we can also indicate that um, um, we can say that uh, our targets always fall uh, in the center of the Q3 detector. Uh, in the center. So the observer can easily identify the, the field. And then, for example, let's say that uh, you, since this is a band C and you get bad conditions, um, if the sky is too high, we can ask uh, to, to modify the integration time. So we can say, please uh, modify integration time accordingly if uh, the sky level is uh, bigger than uh, let's say 10,000 count and, and any other information that you might find useful for the for this uh, program. Uh, and then there are uh, other sections uh, like waiver if you need a waiver, uh, critical observation condition doesn't apply for us, critical aspect if there are coordinated observation with other facilities or some special execution requirements uh, or, or, or the or any calibration different than the standard. 
Um, uh, and finally, the checklist uh, that uh, there are some uh, general questions and some of them specific to the instrument that you have to to answer uh, here. I think everything is not applicable. Oh, well, there are two yes, but depending on your science case, uh, you will have to 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 indicate yes or not applicable. And um, that's it. Uh, we are ready to to submit. So the, the last step will be to click on notify ISO. Uh, so that uh, the the, the material is uh, is ready is labeled as ready for review, and somebody else can can go over it and and go back to you with a, a suggestion on how to improve it, or or just a, a giving you congratulations because everything looks great and, and hopefully you, you will get uh, good data. So if we click here, let's see. Okay, so your super astronomer identify. So now my super astronomer to have received an email saying that I already prepared this uh, material and that uh, they can they can now have a look and see if everything looks fine. And that's it. Uh, I hope uh, you have enjoyed this session and uh, that P2 looks uh, less stressful. And, and yeah, I will be happy to take any. Any question if there is something? I'm going to. Is there any question? Because since I am sharing a screen, I cannot uh, see the the raised hands. Mario seems to have his hand raised, but I don't know if that's from the first comment or not. Oh, it just went down. OK, <laughs> good. So I will stop sharing. So I can see back uh, people. And uh, not sure if Mario has seen there was Lowell has posted in the chat uh, the transmission uh, quantum efficiency of the detectors of the Hawkeye, which shows that they are fairly similar. Actually. Okay, fairly similar. It depends on what band you want to. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I but see. even that, it's a very subtle difference. I see. Thanks a lot. That's perfect. I will stop the recording if somebody is shy to make questions because of that. <laughs>